Welcome to the Blow Up the Blueprint podcast, where it's all about how to use creative thinking in your business for a standout brand with your host, Joe Gifford. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Blow Up the Blueprint podcast. I have a super special guest with me this afternoon. Hi, Dara. Hi. (laughs) This is the lovely, the one, the only, the Dara Paddy. How are we describing you (laughs) these days? So just general writer slash editor slash powerhouse of all the ideas Mm -hmm. kind of thing. General awesomeness. And I think I should probably confess to our listeners, Dara, that we actually have a shared brain that we call Kevin. (laughs) So I've known Dara for a long time now. And um, Dara has been a massively important part of my team. She's now super in demand by lots of entrepreneurs with good reason because she's amazing. And what's wonderful is that because she has this amazing brain of creativity and she's a writer and she's a a super creative type, I can literally, if I'm not functioning properly, hand things over to Dara and say, can you and Kevin look after that? And she does. (laughs) So you have a Kevin in the house today, a full-on double Kevin on the podcast. (laughs) Not that many people get to enjoy a double Kevin. (laughs) It is worth the wait. (laughs) Let's hope it's worth the wait for everyone. Absolutely. (laughs) So Dara, my lovely, talk to us about what you're working on right now, because I want to delve into your creative brain to talk about how creative thinking affects what you do. So what's happening in your amazing world? Well, right now, this minute, I'm working on lots and lots and lots of client projects, trying to get them all out of the door Mm -hmm. to make way for some other exciting stuff that I've got planned. Okay. Because I'm looking at my giant ass whiteboard as we speak, (laughs) and it is just like covered in all of these program ideas that I want to develop over the next few months. Okay. Which is really exciting. Okay. So you are, the, 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 you know, that statement in itself, right? So you're doing client work. And, you know, for those of you who, who haven't met Dara, Dara works with myself. She works with Jenna Wendt. She works with the lovely Bushra Azhar. Who else have you currently got on your roster? You've got some pretty big peeps. I do. I have a lovely American artist named Robin Marie Smith, who is mm-hmm. really interesting to work with because I love the art of crafty world. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a lovely coach from Florida called Tracy. I have some lovely English people as well. You have global client list, right? I do, I global. And for these peeps, you do a combination, don't you, of sort of copywriting, of you know, ghostwriting, editing, all that stuff. Yeah, so a lot of it is helping people either come up with ideas or like translate their crazy whirlpool of ideas into something that makes sense and makes sense for their business goals. Because what a lot of people seem to forget is that content is not the end goal. It's the thing that will help you achieve whatever it is you actually want to achieve. Ah, oh, nail on head, dude. Is it? And, you know, we see this all the time, don't we? People getting stuck like in the overwhelm of content. So so like so you were just saying, I want to back up to your big ass whiteboard, right? Because you were like, I've got this big ass whiteboard with loads of ideas on it and I'm doing my client work. So with your creative brain, how do you manage, knowing that you've got projects to get to that you're really excited about, but you're also balancing, you know, working with your lovely clients currently, how do you manage that kind of influx of awesome and exciting, you know, versus you know, right now I'm working on these bits and you know, I need to get through these ones first. I think it's always going to be a juggling act and there is no like magic silver bullet for having the perfect schedule that has the perfect amount of balance or anything like that. It's a work in progress and I'm like really strict with my time or Mm -hmm. I try to be. I have the most amazingly colour-coded calendar with blocks for (laughs) like different themes and what I'm going to be doing on each day and like different times on each day it's kind of anal and insane that's what I need that's what works for me because I find that otherwise I will do all of one or all of the other I'll spend like an entire day redesigning every single blog image for every single (laughs) blog post I've ever written or I'll just be like spending 20 hours in a day doing a client project so that's so interesting and you are such a brilliant mixture of hyper hyper creative but also super organized you know to the point where you couldn't stand my google drive anymore (laughs) so i had to file it (laughs) i can't can't 
deal with it, Joe. I need to go in there. I need to sort it out. And I love you for that amongst many things. So I want to hear about your schedule. I'm someone who likes to come back to my schedule and kind of rip it all apart and redesign it, which is actually something I redid last week. And I found now that obviously color coded, obviously on Google Calendar, it needs to be in colors, right? So I pulled out, um, so I now have three afternoons a week where I book in, in client calls, which are great. Yeah, that's great on my schedule. Anything that's not client work, whether it's non-call based or call based is, is great. And I have, you know, my new business development stuff um, and my content creation is green. And now I've blocked out that Fridays are entirely biz development and content creation. Mondays are like a combo of sort of new biz stuff and you know non-call based work. But then every three weeks, I'm experimenting with a floating week that is entirely creation. So whether that's you know writing an ebook or batching my podcasts or working on videos or blog writing, so I'm trying to push all that stuff so that I've got a free week completely free and a Friday completely free to kind of let it all out and you know sit in yoga pants drowning flat whites and doing stuff so how do you design your diary so I've actually probably about a month ago now redesigned mine again okay because I sort of slid into the bad habits of always putting off things that were for me or for my business and Mm. just focusing on my like even the tiniest little client requirement seemed more important than really important things for my business Mm. so what I did was I identified five different areas that I'd been neglecting and then I gave each day of the week that area wow I love that so what I'm doing is I'm still like I'm spreading my client work across the five days because what I found in the past is that if I have an entire day just for creation I feel almost like I've got a work hangover and I can't get in the zone Ah, I wonder whether I'll be discovering that. I'll have to come back to you in a couple of weeks after my experiment with this. <laughs> That's a really interesting insight. Yeah, so I've been so my five areas are content for Monday. Mm-hmm. I've got PR marketing and social on a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Admin and finance on a Wednesday. Yeah. Learning on a Thursday because I mean we all buy so many courses and yeah. download so much stuff and never have time to implement any of it. Mm-hmm. And then Fridays for projects. So that's things like if I'm updating my website or if I'm like designing a new program or like trying out a new strategy or designing a new calendar system, for example, oh. um, that stuff can all go on a Friday. And does it help you feel like, you know, so do you feel now like, right, okay, I know what's going on. I know what pots are happening for each day of the week, because I'm sure lots of people listening either kind of starting their side hustle or they're, you know, kind of self-employed, you know, running their small business and they're trying to juggle all of the things. So finding pots to kind of allocate things is really helpful, right? Definitely. I definitely would recommend theming it out because it helps you batch. And I know people talk about batching a lot. But it's like, it's so helpful for your brain. Mm, mm. So if you, if you, I mean, if you're constantly switching, but like if I'm invoicing and then writing a blog post and then answering a bunch of emails and then scheduling my social media and then like dealing with clients and like all in one go, it's, I'm not doing anything with the proper amount of focus. Absolutely. All over. Absolutely. And, you know, it's been proven, is it, that kind of every time we switch a task, you know, it takes us a long time to get into the new one. Whereas you might as well kind of sit there with your mug of tea and your headphones on and some and some music to get it done. Some throwback Thursday music up in the, you know, it's sort of loud in your head and you can get it on done. Whereas, and that's exactly what I just kind of did this week as well, was I was like, right, okay, I'm getting too fragmented again. And I know certainly when I feel really fragmented, it's that, you know, that overwhelm feeling comes back, isn't it? Of like, oh my God, all of the things. And it feels like there's all the humans and all the stuff to deal with. And actually we can take charge of that as business owners. And I think if anyone out there is hyper creative, perhaps is more prone to kind of feeling scattered because you want to be flexible. I think it's great to build in some flexibility into your calendar where you can, but also just kind of contain tasks in a way, perhaps like I've done or or like Dara's done, an experiment with ways of working that feels good to you. Because I know that by Fridays, I'm usually, you know, I kind of want to play and sort of do my own stuff and kind of learn a bit and read a bit and go for my bike rides and just kind of switch off. You know, whereas you, Dara, were saying that you sort of have like a work hangover by that stage. <laughs> yeah, especially because I was, I got to one point where I was saying like Fridays were going to be my day to work on my business stuff. And then the rest of the days were all client, client, client. So after mm. four straight days of just doing nothing but client work, 
by a Friday, I was practically in a coma. It's like I just could, I could not cope with. I couldn't even think in full sentences, let alone actually write anything worth reading. So your, your Kevin was tools down. He was out tool, the tools down, Kev. <laughs> tools down, Kev. Not functioning. Not functioning. So let's talk about, so, you know, you're juggling client work and sort of building your own business as well, your sort of programs and stuff that you want to do. How do you find time still to, you know, keep that creative spark going for yourself? I think, again, that's something that doesn't just happen. You really have to want it and you have to make the time. Mm. Because, I mean, you know as well as I do that if you don't make that time, then nothing will happen your brilliance will not come out you will not do your most creative work yeah 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 absolutely this happens to me every single time I reach that overwhelmed stage and Dara's been a friend and a team member for long enough now to have seen many of the meltdowns (laughs) and um that kind of overwhelmed state is it really is when you're just not allowing enough time to play when you haven't sort of taken charge of your schedule when you're not putting in enough for self-care yourself and without doubt every single time I'm starting to feel really really frazzled sometimes it might take me like an hour to reset and I might just kind of switch off and go and watch something or just kind of get out and have some fresh air or rest and meditate a little bit you know whatever it is that gets me away from that noise or sometimes it will actually be much faster to get the work done if I take a whole day off and recharge myself and then feel fine about everything and then like fly through it all in like a couple of hours but when you're in that really like whacked you know not functioning properly everything takes you 10 times as long doesn't it it's crazy it really does you really have to go and just find that space and it's the most counterintuitive thing in the world because you're like no I've got all the things to do and especially I would say Dara you know we can both put hands up to being a little bit over over achievery maybe <laughs> I mean just maybe just maybe just like I might admit that a little bit and maybe you might admit to it a little bit that you know we find it really hard to stop serving people and stop you know kind of doing the work and taking those beautifully designed lists off and yeah actually what we need to do is to go out there and take some time away so what let's speak about how you work with clients as well with creative thinking because it's such a huge threat in your business as well It is. And to be honest, I probably have a different approach with every client because obviously it's a cliche, but everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I tend to do is I've got like a little batch of hacks that I use for helping people come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. And then I've got another little batch of hacks for helping people develop sort of, I don't even know what the right, I call it a language arsenal, but it's like a sort of a stash of words and phrases and general language and style that sounds like you and not everybody else because there's such a thing at the moment where everybody seems to think they need to be using the same descriptions for things and the same words for things as everybody else yeah I mean and what does that get you that gets you like 50,000 people who sound exactly like 50,000 other people and that's boring and especially in the online business to online business space in the OB to OB space right we, yes. yeah, we see this all the time and you and I I know are both super passionate about this and you know we both talk about this a lot where you need to stand out online so tell me your hacks Dara Put your- <laughs> so, where do we start <laughs> yeah. where do we start so I think the like the most important thing that I always lead with is that you have to share your own personality yeah yeah and people can get really funny with that because they think they need to be professional or they need to always be positive or they need to be this or they need to be that when actually that's all of that is it's not serving you you Mm. need to be yourself because when you're yourself you'll attract the people that you actually want to be working with oh hell yes I mean, Absolutely. if you are always acting like you're this Joe Russell bunny, like dead positive, like hyper, 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 smiley, 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 like always on the live streams, always giving it with the like sing song voice. If you project yourself like that, people are always going to expect that from you. And then when you're having a low day, people are going to be like, hang on, what's happening? Like, why is she acting like a human today? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it's, you know, I think people fear don't they kind of you know showing a sort of vulnerable side or but guys it's real life like you know we all have days when we're knackered we might be juggling businesses kids you know health issues all sorts of all sorts of things in life and certainly by being yourself in the language that you use you know the right clients come to you don't they because that's 
And so clients that come to me and the clients that come to you, Dara, they know you and your life and your beautiful little pups and what you're up mm-hmm. to and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, my clients sort of come to me, you know, kind of asking how the kids are and how's the cats and what you're doing and how's your runs going. And, it, and they know that stuff because we build storytelling and personal storytelling into content. And it, that then polarizes anybody else who isn't a right fit, which is like, you know, half your sort of lead generation done for you because you're like, okay, you're not right. So don't even come and read my stuff. <laughs> cool. So we need to be ourselves. That's a, that's a huge part of it. And, and I think it's like so much effort to try and be someone else. Oh my God, totally. And actually I'm sure, you know, what's your kind of be yourself framework called? Do you have a... Oh, um, yes. So I call it the language arsenal. Of course, of course, the language arsenal. Yeah. Which it's is, more... it's a mini course that I've just released, which um, spells it all out for people. Amazing. Link will be in the show notes. So, yeah, so my method of working through it is called the personal power paradigm, which is a, a similar approach. And I always find, and I'd love to hear sort of how your clients react are as well, like, people are really resistant at first to bring in stories from outside of their work life you know so I'll be saying you know what are some of the struggles you've been through you know kind of education and career and life been so far and people are like well what's that got to do with business and then you know when you show them how they can apply those stories you know bring it into their talking points it's like ah I've got so much to talk about (laughs) definitely I think it's it's like a kind of an epiphany when people realize that actually they can just like blather on about the things that they actually enjoy speaking about and nobody's going to die. <laughs> actually, no one's going to die. It's okay. You can do that. <laughs> it is. I mean, I think another thing that people need to remember is that <laughs> you're always going to have people out there who like are kind of like haters and complain about what you do. And you're going to have that whether you are yourself or whether you are pretending to be somebody else. So you might as well just be yourself. Sorry, I'm still just seeing that that like is a little quote on Instagram. Now. Totally <laughs> Nobody's right. going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but then if someone actually does die, then I'm afraid to, you know, there's a little disclaimer here that we need everyone yeah. sign that if anyone dies after you blather on, we we uh <laughs> we are not responsible. Yeah, yes, the creators know. accept no responsibility for <laughs> actual death. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, absolutely. But that that's so true. And it, I wonder whether, and I'd love to hear what you, what you think about this, about whether it's because it seems too easy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it seems too easy just to be like, yeah, I just did this and I popped to the cafe and this is my normal everyday life and I'm just sharing it with you. And, you know, people are like, why would anyone want to know that? It's like, well, because they can picture who you are and what you're doing. Obviously, if you're having a really boring day, I wouldn't necessarily amp up the, I've done nothing. <laughs> but you know that millions of people still watch Big Brother, right, though? <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true, which is pretty much... Now, you know, little secret, you know, which you know, Dara, you know, so when I have those days, which we all have occasionally where you're like, now, okay, I should back that one up a little bit where I, like you, inhale books, inhale podcasts, I'm absorbing information all the time. You know, we love learning, don't we, Kev? Like, it's like a, we love to learn all the time. But then a day pops up where you're like, I can't actually bring any more information on board. And I like to have a lowbrow TV day while I'm working all kind of days. But I go like really lowbrow. So those kind of days, I probably wouldn't be sharing with people. Although I haven't said that, I've just told everyone on the podcast. So fair enough. <laughs> do you know what? I do it and I talk about it freely. And I, like, if somebody cannot appreciate a good Buffy reference, then they should just get out. This is where we only recently discovered that I'm really bad with my Buffy references, aren't I? And, and you almost, you know, you almost broke up with me. <laughs> I don't know my Buffy. You somehow, despite being a good 10 years younger than me, you know, are completely au fait with every 90s TV programme that I've ever watched. I think you were born in the wrong decade. But, I, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I've totally failed you with Buffy. I can't believe I totally failed you with Buffy. The beauty of Amazon is that you can just, like, get the box up. Okay, I need to invest in Buffy Reed, don't I, just to just to get you know Kevin back up to scratch. I mean, I but you, do. like you need. I mean, that's a big you know creative thinking tip, right? So you need, to, you know, I'm a big believer that you need to bring on information to be able to output some good stuff because you need to be onboarding, you know, sort of new stimulus. You know, you need to be taking stuff on to be able to you know have different ideas to you know have commentary and stuff. But guys, you also need a fallow day. You need a day where you are watching absolute trash where you are not highbrow you are the lowest brow you can ever be 
just to let your brain chill. Yeah, and like embrace the real housewives of everywhere in America. <laughs> I mean, just do, just do it. Let yourself go. But you do that because you know there's so, you know I mean we're swamped by content, aren't we? And as people who teach content and create content for clients, I kind of feel bad about that. But we are like swamped by messaging everywhere and. I'm a massive believer in learning, a huge believer, you know, taking part in conversations and all of that stuff. But sometimes the best thing you can do with your creativity is to do nothing. Do absolutely nothing is to sit in your yoga pants and just hang out and not put that pressure on yourself. And I think I should own that probably more, a little bit publicly. I mean, I've been owning my stadium rock love and... There was a piece of content, wasn't there, that I wrote on a sales page probably about eight, a year ago, Zara, and you were like, which I think included the terms Stadium Rock, Almond Butter, and Jared Leto. And you were like, I would have known that's you writing that anywhere. <laughs> because it had the 90s actor reference, it's got the Almond Butter, and it's got the Stadium Rock. And that's what we're talking about. That, I suppose, it is in effect the language arsenal, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I know that if I read something and it mentions green and blacks, any kind of hot boy... <laughs> like ro- rocky rocky anthems or some kind of nut butter then like joe did that also like a bit of gin and coffee yeah, yeah. gin and coffee then it's a you jobby well you say joe did that but it might have also been dora writing it as joe <laughs> <laughs> kevin was responsible kevin was responsible but actually that's a really interesting thing because there's probably lots of people listening who might be wanting to outsource parts of their writing and think oh you know can anyone else really get my language arsenal right and I guess if, like, if you've really connected with your language arsenal, you know, when you pass that on to someone in your team, I mean, you know me really well because you've got the same brain, but there's been so many times when I've literally briefed you in with something and said, can you go and make that sound, you know, like me? Or, you know, kind of here's the concept, can you write it up? And you will pull on, on blog posts that I've written, on stuff that I've done because you're genius. And it will literally, like, there's so many things that I can't actually tell whether I've written or not now because it's you. And a really brilliant team member is like those, you know, completely integrates themselves with your work and, you know, with how you talk and who you are and all that sort of stuff, which you now do for loads of other clients as well. I know I'm not special to you anymore. But um, You're still special. <laughs> still special. <laughs> but that's so important. So that language arsenal, you know, grows with you, with whether you have more people on board. It does. And I think a really important thing, if you are thinking about outsourcing, is just getting clear on all of that stuff. So I've seen a few discussions recently in Facebook groups where people have been saying, oh, no, no, I could never hire a copywriter. I could never hire somebody to write my stuff because it needs to sound like me. And I'm just thinking, well, yeah, but if you hire someone that's any good, it will. <laughs> that's such a good point. Oh, my goodness. And I think people are really scared of their stuff not sounding like them. And actually, you can write it yourself and it not sound like you, let's face it, because you're yeah, not absolutely with, with who you are and, and how to write compelling copy and... Whereas if you're outsourcing to someone who is really good, who knows their stuff, you know, like your good self, then, you know, you will not only get under the skin of that person and their business, but you'll know all those touch points, all those things. So you would position, you know, me differently to any other, you know, sort of clients of yours because you know us really well and you would also know what to mention that makes it sound like us. And so I think anyone fearing outsourcing needs to find someone who's a really good fit for your business and and make sure that you are super clear super clear on who you are you know so it sounds really dark but a lot of people actually really aren't are they no and I like that's one of the things I actually go into in the language arsenal course is that like you can come up with all of these like sheets and sheets of just scribbles that show your personality so like write down all of the things that you like how do you actually speak what slang do you use when you actually speak to people I mean like scroll through your Facebook messenger or like look at texts that you've sent like how do you sound when you actually speak to people you know Mm. and like Mm. write all of that stuff down and then like think of like for all of your different emotions so think like what makes you feel happy like for me that's gonna be the Buffy Um, (laughs) or like what makes you feel nostalgic or what makes you feel frustrated like brain dump all of the things that make you feel a certain way and then when people are writing your stuff and your goal is to make people feel a certain way you can pull on those references and weave them in so what if we're talking about stuff that makes us you know so we're talking about our language arsenal but we also need to relate it to our audience so what if our audience isn't you know don't necessarily jive with our references you know I mean that's instantly polarizing them or you know is that what we want what's wrong with polarizing people exactly 
I love it. So that if someone's like, I have no clue about Buffy and I don't understand about your 90s references, they're going to be like, I just don't get it. Whereas someone, you know, like, and I'm sure you've had this as well. Like I've had kind of emails that would come straight to my inbox going, oh my gosh, I must, you know, I have to work with you because, you know, they connect immediately with what you've written on a post or bio even sometimes it could be that simple i can hear pups returning <laughs> yeah but the doggies are just coming in from their walk oh bless them and that is you know that's your content working hard for you isn't it it's working for you 24 7 if it's getting people either just, you know either thinking no thank you or kind of instantly getting you know in touch because they want to work with you <laughs> are we about to be attacked oh, about to be... oh they're both, they both look a bit thirsty Okay, we're fine. Um, we're safe. We're safe. We're, we're safe for now. But um, that's actually a conversation that I was having in a Facebook group, t- group today. I posted something and, of course, it included a Buffy reference. And someone actually responded with, like, oh, I, I don't I don't get the Buffy reference. You're like, well, you're not for me. <laughs> no, and it's just, like, even if they, they don't get everything, it's still starting a conversation and it's still memorable. And not everything it is going to be hit-hit. You might have the occasional miss, but... People don't care when you are confident and when you show your personality without shame, people are attracted to that. Now, have you always found that easy, Dara? To... Oh my God, no. <laughs> I know you haven't, which is why I'm bringing that up. So how have you gained your confidence online? I honestly don't think there was a magical fix for that. I think it took me time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now you do lots of, of sort of Facebook lives in like massive Facebook groups. You're really visible as a team member to you know it's a high profile client and have you stepped into that I've really forced myself to Mm -hmm. because I thought that I was letting fear of particularly with the Facebook live example I let the fear of being on camera and the fear of people seeing my wonky face oh my goodness um honestly it's like when I'm being filmed it's so wonky (laughs) Um, (laughs) it's not but that is hilarious. You are it is. such an articulate, like amazing, lovely human being, and I just want people out there listening to you know to hear this because it's like, you're brilliant, and you've had all this fear about being visible. But you're, yeah, I love that. the dogs are going crazy with the water there. They are. They've had a long run, <laughs> but it was the fear of the wonky face that stopped me from doing that stuff. And Gemma went actually challenged me to. She was like, "Go to your Facebook page and just start doing a daily live stream now. Go do it today." Good. Um, because like, um, if nothing, if not obedient. So that's true. That is true. Over, over <laughs> and and, you've got to go and obey. Yeah. So I went and I did it, and it was so cringe and uncomfortable for the first few times. But I kept it up for a whole month, and by the end, like I didn't even like obsess about it before I went live. I just clicked the button and started yammer yammering on. Wow! So like sort of thirty days, yeah, really turned that into you know a piece of confidence. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, well done, dude. That's a really huge thing because I know how much you you know you used to sort of dread you know, being super visible and that's, that's a really, really massive, um, you know, really huge, you know, achievement. And did anybody comment on your wonky face? Just out of interest. No, nobody mentioned the wonky face, but I did, um, to be fair, I didn't have a lot of commenters. So maybe that's why. Okay, fine. But he <laughs> just kind of broadcast on a really, <laughs> really random time of day. No one's around, <laughs> really small group, but I said hello. <laughs> but that, that is really testament to, you know, the more you do stuff, the easier it becomes like you know my very first youtube videos are still up guys they're still there they're still hideous they're just like you know i don't i have, I have like a telephone voice so i'm really like oh, no um it's joe here. it's like oh my god like, I, know, I, I know i've watched them <laughs> I know you have. they're just awful but if you don't start somewhere and if you don't kind of have that progress to kind of find it easier and if I'm honest, I'm, I'm probably a bit too lax now in the, in the I'll, I'll find it easy to keep going, kind of jump on a live after doing a run or after, you know, or, or kind of really sort of disorganised. But I'll find it really easy to go live and I probably should think about it a bit more <laughs> and kind of, you know, look a little bit more pro. So, yeah, that, that's really, really good. You know, reminded just to keep sort of practising and to get out there as often as you can. So what is driving you mad right now? with the online space and how can creative thinking help what is driving me mad i mean if you can pick one thing because i i know (laughs) know. (laughs) um yeah i think that's the challenge because i've got a really short fuse so lots of things drive me mad (laughs) um a keep it clean and b just name a couple of things maybe (laughs) okay probably 
for me right now it's Facebook groups yes so I just I feel like back in the day even just a year ago two years ago people used Facebook groups to actually like connect and communicate with each other and Mm -hmm. like have a community around them of people that understand whatever it is they're dealing with Mm -hmm. and now it's just it seems to be some big guru has said that it's an amazing marketing technique to be in the Facebook group. So now everybody's in the Facebook groups doing like the same visibility stuff. And it's just like blasting out information and then not taking anything back. And I just find it like really draining and tiresome. Yes. Now that is huge. And in fact, I'm, I'm compiling a post right now, which will be going live next week from lots of kind of experts who have their say on that as well. But I agree. I think it probably about 2014, I really noticed it sort of, you know, tipping when there seemed to be this very shouty, very kind of, you know, there's there was less value and curation within the, you know, within groups and communities, and it just became this shouty pitch fest, which you know we're now of course seeing the kind of other side to that is that large groups are closing down. There's more curation going on within communities, and we're seeing a different, you know, sort of slant on things again. So. And maybe people starting out who are like, well, I don't know what else to do then. You know, how would I find clients without being shouty and doing what everyone else is doing? What can they do, Dora? I think, I mean, going back to what we've said earlier on, just go in and be yourself and don't think about always showing up at your regular times to, in quote marks, add value. Mm-hmm. Um, don't write these ridiculous long form posts that you're then gonna repost in every single group with an insightful picture of you stood on a mountaintop (laughs) because like we just we just score like nobody clicks the see more nobody will pause and read see i mean they're in agreement they are they really are the the pups are saying yes and you know i think once i remember once people started getting their vas to post in groups the same quotes it's like guys no you've missed the whole point now like this this is not sustainable it's not something that's a great way to add value to people and if you can stand out in a crowd by being yourself by disrupting amongst all of that noise and using creative thinking to think of maybe other ways to kind of add to conversations you know Um, in fact I saw one of the most disruptive things I've seen in ages on Facebook arrived in my feed yesterday which is quite rare because I usually have the news feed eradicator chrome plugin on to stop all the noise but I was scrolling through on my phone and somebody was re-disrupting with the whole unicorn thing. I'm not sure whether you've seen this one, Dara. With with a strap on on their head. I'm going to go there and say it. Um, And we're saying, you know, (laughs) stop the unicorn stuff. You know, it means you're not being clear with your business messaging. Now, when you see something like that in your timeline, you, (laughs) you stop. And I'm not saying that you need to be that phallic or disruptive or... um, or controversial but you need to think of ways to challenge what's happening and to show your personality yeah I think it's again you don't have to go to that <laughs> I can't oh. even mention that one it was, it was brilliant though brilliant but, no I imagine I imagine I would enjoy seeing that myself but <laughs> I think you can get away with just just having an opinion on things so like saying what you think and sharing what you believe in and actually like having a strong opinion no matter what it's about Mm. it's like having something that you believe in and not constantly thinking oh I need to sit on the fence I need to be neutral I don't want to offend this person or that person it's nobody's going to be offended if all you are doing is sharing an opinion because that's what discussions are all about and also if they are offended well they're not the right people for you yeah, and I just think you should be able to disagree with people and still still be friends. Gosh, absolutely. And I remember, you know, every single week I have people kind of unsubscribe from my list. <laughs> you know, I mean, luckily there's a lot more sort of do subscribe, you know, which is what we want. And I remember when that first started happening or people would say, like, I don't like the language that you use or I was like, OK, that's totally fine. Like, I need you to not be here if I'm not resonating with you. Like, I would much rather have people who really love to hear from me, who really find value in what I'm saying, who really enjoy, you know, what I'm sharing and based that, you know, that I'm holding for them. And, you know, if you're just being yourself and here's the other thing, guys, you know, whilst you're being yourself, you're also sort of developing your kind of business persona and and your business confidence. So, you know, the way that you start appearing online now isn't necessarily going to be how you are in a few years time because you will doubtlessly evolve because you know you've learned more stuff you'll become more confident you might have different opinions 
all of that is fine as well. You know, it's not like drawing this line right now and saying, this is who I am and who I'm going to be as an avatar for like the next 25 years. <laughs> it's like, right, this is, this is who I am. This is what I want to talk about. And you know what? If that changes, then bring your audience along for the ride. Definitely. Yeah. I completely agree. And I think it's really healthy to go out there with, you know, some mistakes and all and, you know, with the bloopers and, you know, with being yourself, because actually people really relate to you. And we didn't all start off with like a, you know, YouTube studio and likes and all of that stuff. You know, no one's kind of started with all that stuff, you know, completely set in their brand message nailed. You know, this is all an evolution. And, you know, your language arsenal might change. The way that you sort of talk about things might change. You might have a massive pivot and decide that actually everything you've ever said in the, in the past is ridiculous and you've got a completely different change of mind. That's totally fine. You've just got to start. You've just got to start. So, Dara, my darling, where can we find you on all so the interwebs? You can find me over my website, which is darapaddy.com. And nobody can spell my name, so I will have to give you the link to the show notes. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys, but it's uh, D A I R E P A D D Y dot com, but we'll put the link in the show notes. And then I tend to hang about on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, where at the moment I am spending lots of time sharing paintings because that's my current self care area of focus. Brilliant. I love it. So I'll put all the stuff in the show notes. And Zara, will you come back on, please, and, um, and have a double kev with me again? Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. And guys, if you're listening to this, I'd love to hear, uh, you know, your thoughts on, you know, what's had you stuck in the past with getting your language and your and your language arsenal out. So do check out Zara. She's amazing. Zara, thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you soon, everyone.